Okay, so I've got my igniters. Um, now, the igniters that you use are going to depend on what you're trying to do. Um, for the ejection charge, um, the auxiliary ejection charge, I would recommend an E-Match or um, the Firewire Mini, uh, which I have right here. These are low current igniters that will fire off with almost any battery. Now, the igniter you use for setting off the rocket motor back here is going to depend on what motor it is. Um, if it's a black powder, then the Firewire Mini will work fine. Um, if it's uh, a Quest motor, uh, like a composite motor like this, um, the these won't fit into the nozzle, so it's not going to work. Um, you have to use the uh, the First Fire Mini or the First Fire Micro um, that do fit into the nozzle like this. This is these motors are already burned, so this is all inert because I'm working indoors and I want to be safe. Um, so this motor would be installed into the back of the rocket like this. Got to get it in, get that clip over, just like that. Um, the igniter itself will go. Um, there's that transfer tube, um, which is. Uh, do I still have that other one here? All right. So this this was the uh, the uh, eBay sled that I built earlier. Uh, and see this this um, tube right here is for the igniter to go down through that tube and it will come out and then you'll bend it back around and put it into the rocket motor like that. So I just wanted to show you how that goes. Um, the igniters, the wires unfortunately aren't long enough um, that are supplied with the rocket motors. So as you can see here on this here, I've extended the wires um, so that I can get them through that tube. And you're gonna need approximately 11 to 12 inches long on your igniters here. Um, so I will take that igniter and push it through here so that it comes out the back and then it will go into the nozzle. And you wanna, you know, do this carefully. Um, this is a live, you know, this is not a live motor, but you're gonna have a live motor. Uh, push it in as far as it will, will go, and then try to push the igniter wires back into the, uh, the rocket. When the rocket burns, those igniter wires are gonna come flying out like this, and they're going to just hang in the back of the rocket like that as the rocket's going upwards. Uh, which is totally fine. That works just fine. Um, there's nothing you can do about it. There, there, there's no way to get rid of them. Uh, but the rocket will fly fine. So once it's into your, your rocket motor, and you take the other ends, um, and on the timer here, there's a, there's a T side and an A side. The A is for the apogee, the T is for the timer, which is the rocket motor. Um, so I will put those into their respective um, blocks. And these aren't polarity sensitive, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm putting this in the T side. Okay, so now your ejection charge will go into the A side. Um, and so that will go in through the hole here. And how long you want them is totally up to you. I would probably kind of cut that short. strip those wires. And 
and then put it into the terminal block for the apogee. Just fighting with the wires is the hardest part. They're kind of stiff and they don't want to go where I want them to. Okay, so they're in the terminal. They were in the terminal block until I just pulled them out and tighten them down with a small screwdriver. Okay, so they're in there good. Okay, so now you're gonna need an ejection charge onto that um, igniter. Um, for that, what we recommend is just taking a rubber glove, an old glove, um, taking the scissors, just cutting off the tip like that. That makes a nice little canister that you can use and you're gonna put black powder in there and I don't have any black powder and I'm indoors so I wanna be safe. So for demonstration purposes only, I'm just using sand. So this is, I would weigh out the correct amount of black powder and I think for this rocket, it's about one quarter of one gram. So it's not a lot. As you can see, you know, my calibrated eyeball gives me one quarter gram. Um, we're gonna take the igniter and you're gonna push it all the way into that black powder. And then you want to, um, you can either take tape or a tie wrap or a piece of wire, rubber band, something, just to uh, make sure that uh, the black powder um, stays down there like that. And then cinch it down good so that it doesn't come off easily like that. And that's our ejection charge. And you can, you know, you can kind of pull it back a little closer if you want, it's up to you. Um, and then we're gonna take our shock cord. So basically at this point, the electronics is hooked up and it's just getting the rest of the rocket ready. So as before, we're gonna take the shock cord loop pass that loop through there, take the other end, pass it through, and then pull tight. All right, then we're gonna take our body tube, take the end of the shock cord, slide that through, come out this end, take the loop on the front, pass it over the, oops, I wanna go through here and then pass it over the nose cone and then pull that tight. So now my shock cord is attached. Um, here's my parachute. Well, at this point I can take this, um, connect my battery, put my, uh, it is turned on. I, I can see a light there, so I wanna turn that off. Okay, um, I want to double check my igniter. So I want to double check, make sure when all that futzing around I was doing at the front that I didn't pull it out because it needs to be as far into the motor as you can get it. And you're going to take this, slide it in, tuck all your wires in there, and then you're going to take your... Uh, plastic rivets. This time you are going to put the plunger in. There's one there and then there's one on this side as well. So there's two rivets that hold it together. And at this point now you can't pull that nose or the, the tube off. This is tied in there. Um, before I put in my uh, parachute um, you got your recovery wadding that has to go in. Um, you have to use recovery wadding, even though it has a baffle, but it's because of that extra ejection charge. 
Um, there's nothing between the ejection charge for Apogee and the parachute. So you do want to protect your parachute. So you'll put that in there. You're going to take your nose cone or your parachute. Nose cone. <laughs> open this up. This parachute has seen better days. <laughs> got a couple of holes in it. Make sure you got that good wadding in there. Uh, protect that parachute. And like before, there's there's three lines. One, the one in the middle goes over the top so that when you pull on it, all the, the lines are nice and straight and there's no twists in them. Take that. Put it into there. Take the apex, pull it through. Okay, then you're going to fold up your parachute the way you normally fold up a parachute. Um, something doesn't seem right here. My lines don't seem straight. They don't seem even. So gather up all the corners and then massage these lines so that they're nice and tight before you pull tight there. There we go, that's much better. Shot cord goes in. Parachute goes in, nose cone goes on. Okay, so the top stage is ready to go. Um, then your bottom stage, again, um, you're going to want to put your wadding in there first. Um, this is not enough wadding. I'd have to get more wadding for this. But you put your wadding in, put your shot cord in, you put your parachute in. All right, then put them together. Um, here's be the rocket motor for the bottom stage. Now this is completely independent of up here. Um, you're gonna launch this like you do a normal rocket motor. You'll put your igniter in and you'll um, attach the clips on the launch pad. Um, make sure that your launch lugs align and you're gonna load it onto the pad, stick your igniter in um, then you don't, you have to remember to turn on your, your timer. Um, here is the switch hole and we put this other hole here so you can see the flashing lights, um, to know that it's on and armed. So it's going to go through its, uh, setup sequence and at the end of it, um, which is, it'll take maybe, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, um, I should get a green light which means it's ready to go. Um, so you can just look in through that hole. That's the viewport hole for the, uh, to verify that your timer is correct. And that's it. Then your TTV is ready to launch. If everything works right, uh, the rocket should go up. The ejection charge, um, you, uh, for the motor down here, you want a fairly short delay charge. So if you can get a three to five seconds, that will be fine. The rocket's going to coast up. Depending on how long you have your timer set at, um, that's going to control the ignition of the upper stage motor. So, you know, if, if you have it set for um, three seconds um, as the rocket takes off um, at, at motor burnout, um, or it's, it's actually going to be from liftoff, that's where the timer is set. From liftoff, you know, if it had set at three seconds, so three seconds into the flight, this is going to ignite and it's going to pull away and everything, you know, then the ejection charge should blow the nose off 
Uh, but if the motor doesn't ignite because it's a composite motor and we know how finicky those are, if it doesn't ignite, what will happen is the rocket will continue upwards and as soon as it hits um, horizontal like this, um, the timer inside will sense that the rocket is horizontal and then it's going to blow that other alternate ejection charge and blow the nose and the parachute out um, so that this recovers safely, even if the motor doesn't ignite. So that's the purpose of the simple timer and why we actually built this particular rocket so that we could test everything and it works fine. And um, it does work. It works really great. This is a nice flying rocket, good for testing things, and it's just fun too. Um, so this has been the Timer Test Vehicle Assembly. My name is Tim Van Milligan. This is Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.